All right, boys, I think we're live. We are? Hold on. Yeah, we're live. Oh, shit. Yes, we are, are we? <laughs> hey, everyone, welcome. Let's see who joins in the first few seconds. Are we doing our surprise nudity for the first few seconds, like always? <laughs> it's always Steve Dev. Steve Dev has been on this thing forever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, congratulations, know. man. Hey, what's up, Grimace? <laughs> Steve and Grimace, yeah. Welcome, guys. Um, all right, so yeah, today we're, we're talking about this little thing called war driving. We're going to do 101. We're going to break it all down. We've got some different things that we want to talk about. We've got all the experts except for me here. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know. So I mean, there we'll, are more experts than us out there. <laughs> we don't have a well, we, have, we have Grimace in the chat, so he can help us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have, the, we have the champion in the chat. I feel, I feel, I feel weird about that. But... <laughs> So we'll do we'll do what we can. So um, yeah, uh, Katara, why don't you kick us off, man? All right. So uh, it all came out from the talks we did with uh, both Ricks um, at the uh, after DevCon Safe Mode on your Twitch. Um, a lot of people hit me up later afterwards about the war driving stuff. So I figured we do a basic one one today. Um, you know, covering the general concept and you know what, why, how, and you know the stuff. We won't probably go into real detailed technical talk because that might be, that'll make it endlessly long. And, uh, but so, yeah, I mean, you know, starting with, uh, you know, what is war driving, right? Um, you know, it's something that we do. Uh, a lot of us did. Um, a lot of people think it's, you know, something that, you know, noobs do or whatever it is, but you know, there are guys like us who have been doing this for a while and we really enjoy the act. And uh, according to Wikipedia, war driving is the act of searching for Wi-Fi wireless networks, uh, usually from a moving vehicle using a laptop or a smartphone. Um, and the software is freely available on the internet. Now there's, I guess war driving is the general term, right? I mean, there are people who do, like I don't drive, so I war walk or war skate or, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, so, but in general, it's called war driving. Um, the uh, etymology is from war dialing, um, uh, you know, uh, made popular with the uh, movie War Games. So, um, but yeah, um, side note, uh, there are a lot of things surrounding war driving, but um, I guess I started war driving because I always had a fascination with wireless radio, right? I like the idea of plucking information out of thin air because it's almost magical. Um, I used to have a radio scanner, you know, scanner for frequencies, listening into conversations and stuff. And war driving for me was an extension of that. Um, I think I built my very first war driving rig, like not the phone, but like a custom rig almost six, seven years ago, I think. Um, but yeah, that's how I got into it. Uh, how about you guys? Kim, why don't you go next? Yeah, um, for me, when I was a kid, like it fascinated me that like you had a box and you could talk into the box and it would come out of another box. So any wireless stuff fascinated me. And I, um, when I was in the army, so I got into signals intelligence. So radio stuff was a big deal. But I, I ended up in mobile forensics. So um, to me, war driving, I would get an Android phone and I'd get a, some database that had a bunch of access points around them and I wanted to know where they were. So I, I got, so I hooked up to Wiggle and saw that I could, I could like map some of those access points to find out where that phone had been. And uh, so that's kind of what got me into it about 2011, 2012. And so I, I started kind of using it for that. And along with that, I started traveling. So... I grabbed, you know, Wiggle's uh, Android app and started scanning for it and just got really interested in, and it's kind of creepy and I'm kind of a creepy guy. So, you know, it's, it kind of, it kind of played into that, so, but it was really a work thing uh, at the first, uh, just to kind of scan around and try to get as many, as many points as I can to find out where phones had been before. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of, a, you know, I, I loved radio and that was kind of an extension of that really. Well, you might. Mike. Well, and for me, um, it was really uh, like really crappy internet, right? I had really crappy internet for a long time. I live in a little rural town in Utah. <laughs> we've always been left behind on the internet scene. And verify. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that, it, um, it, certain neighbors would have higher speed internets or something, and you'd drive around and you'd be able to find that. 
Um, this was in the days of uh, some Napster, Kazaa, et cetera, uh, where you had your $5,000 laptop <laughs> from 10 years ago um, that was like 30 pounds. But um, yeah, really, it just was um, wanting faster internet and getting better connections. And then some friends of mine did stuff with wireless, um, being able to set up like point to point connections. And then all of a sudden, they had like 10 megabits of speed with like the Aranocos and you're just like, Oh my gosh, this is the most amazing thing in the world. Um, and that, that ultimately led me to uh, run in my own wireless ISP for a while. Um, and then learned all of the pain of customer service and doing that. <laughs> so I did that for a long time and then uh, got out of there. Cause that's not, a, that's not a long term career path for me. I just don't have the patience. And uh, then I, I got back into it, um, especially with all the devices that are around. Uh, it's part of the part of the you know really interesting things with the Internet of Now and the Internet of Things, and trying to figure out what's out there, what is it, what are they doing, and why. And then the data leaking too. The data leak stuff is really interesting to me. Like um, I remember uh, Fire Sheep when that bug or that uh, mm. app was released to be able to pull off the creds that like in Starbucks, huh? That feature. That, that feature. feature, yeah, that feature. <laughs> you know, and that that type of stuff like really opened my eyes to how scary it was. And so, um, yeah, that's what really got me into it. And then it's like. Now, yeah, we, a lot of stuff's encrypted. Everything, you know, a lot of communications are encrypted, but not everything. Plus, people roll their own encryption still. So there's all these little niche areas that are fun to find. Um, and I'm kind of obsessive and collective. Like, I love Pokemon Go, if anybody ever didn't know that about me. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of like Pokemon Go, but with wireless signals. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of the, the trajectory that I took and, and my involvement with wireless that brought me here. And then I did a couple of projects at DEF CON and uh, they were, they were uh, nice enough to let me demo them and work on those projects live at De Black Hat and at DEF CON. So huge shout out to um, all the staff and just all the volunteers that just really enabled me. And ultimately it's, I've like, I've been able to do things on the shoulders of other people with like hack five and, um, with DEF CON staff and, you know, even these guys that are sitting here, they've enabled me to do stuff. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a really amazing journey. See, so. The problem with you, Mike, is that nobody knows who you are because you don't have the Wi-Fi pineapple on you. As, <laughs> right, as, exactly. as being pointed out in the chat. Like on your head. <laughs> right now, so I need to make you a fake one that's light enough so it can be enough or a print out one on a panel. Oh, that's a, I brought the Kraken. Does that count? Yeah, that counts. No, uh, it doesn't. Sorry. But uh, <laughs> no, I think that's cool. Um, I think that that's a nice segue into next, right? Why do we word drive, right? So some of us do it for work. Some of us do it as a hobby. But we all, I often get the questions like, well, why would you want to word drive? It's creepy. And what do you do with all the it data? You know, it is. I mean, I guess it is creepy. And um, But also, what 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 ethical use is there to this process, right? And, um, or like, you know, people complain or they'll be like, you know, um, you know, why would you, why would you do this? And I think there are multiple angles to that, right? I mean, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're uh, doing a red team engagement, for example, right? Um, then, you know, you can use it as recon, right? And to figure out what's around you. Um, or, you know, if you have an issue with, you know, a lot of different Wi-Fi issues at home, then you can, you know, basic scan around your network or your neighborhood will give you an idea of what channels people are using, right? Um, and, but I think also, you know, the, the notion is that, you know, war driving is something that noobs do or somebody who wants to get into this field does. But in reality, I think, you know, with everything connected now, I mean, everything, like I have like shitty IoT devices I bought off Amazon that has, that have a wireless access point in it and they have an app that connects to it. So I think right now is the golden age of actually war driving, right? Yeah, I, mean, I totally agree with that. I mean, yeah, man. I think, I think the days of when we war drove back in the days and we only saw wireless devices as in access points are over. I mean, I see Nest cams. I see, I see generic. The neighbors' kindle. 
yeah or like you know <laughs> yeah. or yeah. or like you know or uh kettle smartphone i mean smart fridges uh, like there's i mean and there's so much like stuff that's out there that that you know it has like a ssid of like esp32 and it doesn't tell you what it is right so right. i'm like so i'm like i think i think if right now might be actually even more fun to war drive because of all the other devices that are out there well, and I think oh, yeah. too, part of it is, is there's like less of a distraction, right? Because mm. bandwidth isn't a problem anymore, right? right? And so there's so much bandwidth and it's so cheap um, that it's easy to just put devices out there. And then, so it's not that we're trying to like find connectivity or find, you know, something. It's, it's that next step. What is the next layer that we're looking at? Is it security? Is it weird access points? Is it something doing weird things? Or is it a device that just is doing really weird, bizarre behavior? you know so yeah and i've seen a lot of people they they think of war driving is like uh like you said like the noobs like it's the basic stuff but at the same time it's it's really the fundamental stuff that if you don't understand this you don't understand what types of devices are normal like i i stare at a lot of screens i see a lot of mac addresses i see a lot of devices whether they're cars or trucks or you know, like you said, like, you know, like refrigerators and uh, barbecue grills and all sorts of things. And people see these are like, oh, my God, that's so weird. Well, no, that's actually pretty normal. It's 2020. Um, get over it. And so it's kind of a baseline to even be able to do advanced attacks. You need to advance. You need to understand what's out there, what's actually in the world to be able to move on to things like de-authing and rogue access points and things like that. You need to know what's actually out there to be able to understand that first. Um, yeah, I, th so. and I think, I think like, especially living in a, in, in a highly urbanized environment like myself, right? In Tokyo, for example, um, war driving has helped me manage some of the network congestion issues that I were having because I was like, there's, there's something weird going on. And then I, then there's my, my neighbor has like a shitty cheesy whatever generic router that is super loud and i'm like fucking hell <laughs> you know just like <laughs> so i mean I, I think you know it's not just it's just not I, from, from i think we've moved on from the days of trying to find free wi-fi because it's it, free wi-fi is pretty much everywhere right um but or in a lot of places, uh, but now it's more about the individual devices that we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. So, all right. What, uh, what specifically drives you to it, Kintaro? Like, what is your thing that you're after? All right, I, I'm. I, I have an addictive personality to begin with, so um, Dragoran of Kismet um, always makes fun of me having janky packets because I'm not unlike you. I don't care about the fullness of the packet. I just want to hit that number of devices I've seen. So if I go outside and, you know, my first setup shows me, I don't know, 2000 and my next iteration shows me 3000. I'm like, fuck yeah, I got another thousand. Right. Um, I don't like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really into the analysis of what I see. Um, for me, it's purely, um hitting that number it's almost like overclocking in a sense that i just want to i just want to see how much i can connect collect number wise on the device that i have so uh what about you mike so for me it uh, originally started out as like what can i see like you all the numbers as much as i can see and then it's evolved now very much so into the analytics of it what are these devices what do they do how are they correlated can I tie them to um, some other like piece of information? Like this many people were in this room at this given time, which correlates to something happening. It's some sort of event and that type of stuff. Like I started down the data science rabbit hole and that stuff really drives me. I, um, I, I really like it. It's hard. It's really hard. And I give a lot of respect to people that do that analysis um, because there's so much noise. There is so much noise. It's how do we dig through that? So it's like digging through that has been really rewarding. The other thing that really drives me is building apparatuses to be able to collect, to meet the goals that I want to achieve, you know? 
Um, I love building solutions for the problems that I run into, whether it's hardware, whether it's software, whatever. Um, that's really, it's a problem solving thing for me at this point. Well, you can. Uh, yeah, for me, I don't know. I just, I just love wireless things, but it became apart from work stuff and mapping where things had been at whatever time I, it like, like Mike says, uh, it was like seeing what's out there, like what types of things am I supposed to see? So when I see them in other places, I know what they are, you know, what types of cars have Wi-Fi in them? Um, what types of, you know, you know, smart me, you know, smart meters are not exactly Wi-Fi, but uh, <coughs> you know, that sort of thing. What, what sorts of things have wireless and, and it was kind of like just, again, it was curiosity, what's out there. I, when I travel a lot, I like to watch people. Um, like when I'm in an airport, I like to watch them and kind of figure out their backstory just by looking at them. And it's kind of the same with wireless. I kind of like, oh, what is going on here? You know, who is this person? You know, they have an iPhone. Oh, yeah, they also a... have a Galaxy S7. They must be a Mormon, you know, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. You know? And so there's that's a lot of that's things. That's a sign that like you to travel too much and you're bored too much. Well, that's true, but it's, it just keeps me, it keeps me interested in it. And I don't really care who these people are, honestly. But I, I just want to know what's out there. And then, and like with Wiggle war driving, it, just, it becomes, I want to make the leaderboard. I mean, let's yeah. be honest. I want yeah. to get millions and millions of access points. And I have. And, and I want to ride on Kim's coattails. So. Right. So it's. it's <laughs> and I'm going to ride you both. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. You're not going to ride me, man. Sorry. And unless you come here, that's, you have to come here to do that. But uh, it was really about that. And, and it's really helped me actually in my work as well, but uh, it's just kind of, you know, some people play video games. I scan Wi-Fi. That's yeah. just what I do. No, that's, that's like I said, I mean, when I'm at home for me, it's overclocking, right? Um, close to overclocking. How much can I get hit that extra? Oh, yeah. Um, but when I'm traveling, um, SSID collection is, is kind of fun because, you know, I go to weird places and, you know, some once in a while, somebody will have a really good idea for a wireless SSID or an SSID name. And I'll be like, oh, that's kind of cool, you know, <laughs> and uh, funny. So, um, yeah, one of the fun projects I did was um, some years ago, I did some analysis on SSID names and most common and which ones involve swears and which ones involve like dirty words and stuff. It kind of was the, uh, you know, the, the, um, what was it? Uh, uh, Carlin, John, uh, uh, George Carlin, you know, his, his, yeah. the dirty words, like using his reference to like go through and figure out which ones are the most used networks. It is pretty funny in some of the names that people will come up with. And I mean, they're just publicly broadcast. So. Yeah. Right. I mean, you go to DEF CON, there's always like 12 FBI van SSIDs and shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, well, and Kim always says, like what do you say about FBI vans? thousand of those on Wiggle. So. Mm -hmm. Well, Kim, what do you say about FBI vans? What's your advice? FBI surveillance van, there's something like, I just did a search today. There's something like 86,000 of those. Yeah, now. you're not unique like, anymore. FBI surveillance van something, whatever. Also, so, so if you are, fat something. <laughs> so if you are an actual FBI surveillance van, it's probably pretty good cover to use No, that it would thing. be a great one. If I had an actual <laughs> FBI surveillance van, that's what I would name my Wi-Fi. Because it would <laughs> <laughs> I used to call my uh, mobile uh, uh, mobile hotspot um, infected by virus. Oh yeah. Nobody would connect to something that is declaring it's infected by a virus. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Virus.exe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You still uh, see that once in a while, but. One other thing too that I want to hit on that's really been driving me recently is uh, the proliferation of Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. um, even to the point of where uh, it's been included in Tesla cars, so now we can track Tesla cars. The Tesla scanning app. You drive down the road, and all of a sudden it beeps at you, and you're like, "Oh, there's a Tesla." And you look up, you're like, "Yeah, there's a Tesla." And you can do the same thing with air pressure gauges. There's the tire pressure gauges from certain cars. You Wait, get some you information that. that. <laughs> and nice. also, they're in in car Wi-Fi's entertainment systems. I mean, so, technically, we'll so in that, that sense, I mean, war driving has expanded beyond the 802.11 wireless Wi-Fi computer Wi-Fi, oh, yeah. right? And we have Bluetooth. Definitely. We have all these other protocols. Uh, we have a lot more tools available to, to check. So, you know, I think that's, 
I think that's a, that's that's one of the reasons why it's more exciting now to do than ever because we get to see a lot more things that are out there, putting out you know information. So um, now we have to give a caveat though: there are places where war driving is illegal. Oh yeah. Um, uh, the Ninth Court Circuit, or is that what it's called? Ninth Circuit Court. Yeah, that one. For example, has de deemed that sniffing for Wi-Fi packets is illegal. It's wiretapping without a warrant. So, which interesting fact? I'm not a lawyer, so consult a lawyer. Yeah, Someone yeah. said that in Las Vegas, they're apparently under that jurisdiction. I think yeah. it was Zero who said that. So yeah, so, part again, I'm not a Vegas. lawyer, so double check that. But uh, uh, weird. <laughs> Right, so which would That's make great. you know, which could be problematic for if there was like a conference there, you know, <laughs> that had people... a conference there. All right. <laughs> That's weird. So, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, there there are places. Um, I think Europe has a really has as more stringent because of GDPR requirements and stuff. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, before you engage in this, talk to your lawyers. Um, if do your research, do your research, right? Yeah. So, um, and in China, apparently too, I learned while I was in China, um, that if you're a foreign entity, even possessing the wireless equipment and transmitting or broadcasting or receiving in the country is illegal. Yeah. I, I learned that from my friend Rich while I was in China capturing. So yeah, there are a lot, of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of countries that, have different radio frequency management legal guidelines. So make sure you, you know, just because Mike does that does not mean you can in your place. Um, so. yeah. Or maybe it does, yellow. Oh, yeah. I'm you not your know. lawyer, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, ain't, I ain't taking responsibility for you getting arrested before driving and going, like, well, Kintaro said it was okay. So that's. Um, <laughs> So, all right. So now we got all the concept stuff out of the way. So, okay. How would, how do you war drive, right? So the next is the how part, right? And I think what a lot of people, I think the misconception is, is where it comes initially from, right? We're trying to get better Wi-Fi access. So there was a lot of pwnage based war driving, I guess, right? Right. Like I've got to break into this network. Right. So, yeah. um, but I think we have moved on from that like uh, like we said if you wanted to see a better idea of what waves are flying around then you know you have you have different approaches so um, you have different tools right uh, yep. right so i mean like for i think kismet um props out to dragorn is 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 probably the most comprehensive tool to come if it if it comes to wireless capturing yeah, I, mean, I, I would i would i would say except for the probably it's definitely right <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely well, I mean, it's got, it's, the argument yeah. could be made that an sdr captures more well possibly but is there software for it yeah yeah uh, so some rando guy in new york is producing more than all of the sdr companies right now basically <laughs> right and dragorn's doing yeah kismet's got basically a comprehensive tool that you can do a lot of stuff with right um and a lot of, whenever whenever I re reference Kismet, a lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, I used that way back." I said, "No, but have you used the new one?" Because the new one, like you know, um, uh, Russ, um, who's in the chat, you know, he made an uh, um, ADSB um, plugin for it. ADBS, right? ADSB. 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 Yeah, yeah, that yep. one. You were right the first time I wrote it. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> That's my uh, dyslexia kicking in. It's like, <laughs> just kicking in the number. But, uh, and it's not just, you know, like I said, uh, regular Wi-Fi 802.11.2.4, but there's now a cover of, you know, it covers a wide range of different signals. So I think definitely, but at the same time, it might be overkill for what it is that you're trying to do, right? Mm -hmm. So right. there is a process of, you know, you have to, Net stumbler. Yeah, old school. I stumbler on the Mac. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think you have to determine what it is that you're trying to do, right? Uh, and how much data you want to collect, right? I mean, like there are times where Kismet is overkill. Like if I just wanted to collect SSID, I don't need Kismet, right? Um, so, I mean, I could... 
you know, I've uh, I've built a couple of these Arduino things, you know, out there that, you know, that uh, this one is actually from D-Strike, but, you know, that, that only scans for SSIDs and logs the SSIDs, only the open ones, right? So yeah. um, I, th I think, um, so for me at least is that, you know, when I go war driving, you know, I have multiple parts, like, if I'm at home, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to add to my wiggle points like you, Kim. It's like, you know, leaderboard stuff. Um, if I'm traveling, I might be just collecting open SSIDs because I, I want to compile a list of open SSIDs in the world. Um, and I know you, Mike, that you have the Wi-Fi pineapple that captures all the stuff, right? Yeah, so, I mean, it just depends on what, you know, you want your goal to be, right? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, and for me, it's kismet, and I want all the packets, and I want all the data, so that way I can do the analysis. But in some cases, using the ESP8266 um, completely makes sense to be able to just grab SSIDs. So it comes down to what your goal is, so. Yeah, and I, for most people who are starting war driving, I just recommend you grab an Android phone, put wiggle on it and look at the screen, see what you're seeing. And yeah. you're going to get, you're going to Wi-Fi access points and you're going to get Bluetooth devices. Well, and, also, uh, I mean, if you have an iPhone, technically you can war drive with your iPhone. Technically, Yeah, go ahead. There is <laughs> a, there's a, there's a wireless scanning feature in the airport utility. Um, the only thing is you have to s enable that in settings. So if you go to airport utility settings, there's a Wi-Fi wi scanner option. You turn that on, and then you can scan for it, and you can export the findings to a text file. So, yep. you know, you don't need an Android if you just want to start out and figure shit out. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I recognize just get a phone, start start scanning stuff, and just look at stuff, see what stuff you start to see, what do you got, and then like Mike said, he goes in deeper. He wants packets. He wants to see attacks and things like that but, well he uh, built a whole talk about his findings so yeah <laughs> i i heard he made this thing that had a whole bunch of like weird antennas yeah, on it was it like and like stick, stick it i don't know <laughs> it's it was really stupid but you know i think i think uh, somebody in the chat i think some of the drunks had a question is that so for you mike i guess what are you using for huge data quantities so how are you i guess analyzing it uh, the biggest thing is sharding. Um, sharding has been really important to be able to take advantage of uh, multiple resources. So being able to cut those packets into smaller pieces, do a smaller amounts of analysis on that, and then put them back together at the end. It was actually Kim who uh, originally wrote the first proof of concept um, for doing this, and I kind of stole his code and ran with it and turned it into a no, tool you, called PCAP. What? You did? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it, I mean, the, the goal is like most of the time when using Wireshark and stuff, it's pretty single threaded. Like it's, it's very, you know, and that's just the nature of the way a PCAP file is stored. I mean, a packet is stored. It's, it's boxes inside of boxes, inside of boxes, inside of boxes. So to be able to unravel that, you've got to be able to, um, uh, split that into lots of pieces in order to optimize it and make it process faster. So. Um, that and just lots of storage, <laughs> lots of high speed storage. And don't and don't you have a tool that you released last year? What's it called? <laughs> yeah, it's called pcapinator. Check out my GitHub, yeah. github.com slash mspicer. <laughs> nice. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> plug. <laughs> plug. Right, yeah. Shameless plug. Um, um, yeah, and you know, getting back to um, kind of just the the, you know, getting started route. You can also start, like you said, with the Wiggle route, and then you can dig deeper. How do you dig deeper with Wiggle? Go into your Android phone, pull the CSV files that are being generated. Look at what that data actually is, right? And then you can start doing your own analysis with the data that you've collected, and then it becomes really interesting. Plus, on top of that, Wiggle gives you extra access to their API once you've submitted things and you've created an account and... Um, yeah, then at that point, you can do more interesting queries and, and uh, start looking for uh, WPA3 networks, if those really do exist. Um, I heard they Zero's don't. house no, is the only don't. one that exists right now. I think it's real. <laughs> yeah. Can I say something about Wiggle? Um, yeah, we, we were going to wait till the end. But yeah, they if you're doing a project, um, 
wiggle-admin at wiggle.net. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll help you out. If you're doing like an open source project, uh, a something for school or a study or something like that, they will help you out. They're not horrible people. They're not ogres. They're not <laughs> they're, terrible. They're oh, nice they people. Us, I don't know why you start with like, they're not ogres. You're like, they gave us these fucking you make it hats so, You make free, it sound like, like, free. like, no, I, Andy sent me this email. He's like, you know, we're not actually bad people. It's like, <laughs> no, they are, they are nice people. They will help you out. And, um, yeah, and so you can do a lot of lot of uh, analysis, like Mike said, just using Wiggle. There's a lot of stuff out there, and they'll help you out doing that. Uh, and uh, of- also, it's just posted in the chat too that the um, uh, the SQL uh, Lite database, that's the SQLite database, that's the Wiggle file that all the data is stored. You can do some fun in there too. Yeah. So pulling yeah. the data off an Android phone is a huge start, you know. Yeah, it is. I agree. Um, I think initially. I might have just started with like Airmon from the Aircrag mm-hmm. NG Suite. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of grew into, I wanted to do more. So I used the old Kismet. Um, and then I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And um, I only got an Android phone later in my life. So then I was like, oh, there's Will on the iPhone, on the Android. So um, I started using Will. So I think it, you know, it, it, it's definitely a progression, right? You start somewhere. And you just keep going on that. And then in the end, right now, I'm making custom rigs and custom setups for specific needs that I have that, you know, like. Um, Can and you I tell think... us about some of those? <laughs> no, because people want to know. I mean, seriously. Right. So, like, this is my travel SSID collector. I made it look like a, like a beeper. So you turn it on, <laughs> right? Oh, nice. Um, and it has three main functions. So one is... Um, scan once and it will sit, there's an SSI uh, mini SD card in here that will store the, um, the, its findings. There's continuous scan, which is uh, it will continuously keep scanning and writing to the file. And then there is what I call top dog, which finds the strongest SSID in the neighborhood. So you just kind of click on, click on it and it'll just go, go, go look for it. So um, nice. yeah, so it will find my, my, my SSID is the strongest. I'm just going to, Everybody knows it, but it's fine. <laughs> so, like, this is pretty much for because this came out of a project that Mubix was doing, right? Mubix was like, uh, I'm collecting all these open SSIDs that I can plug into the Pine AP on Wi Fi Pineapple so that, you know, um, I, I get um, uh, it can be used by the Wi Fi uh, Pineapple. Um, and then there's, ah, um, oh, shit, I don't have one right now. Uh, there's Ponogachi. Uh, by Evil Socket out there, you know that's more focused on poning and cracking the the encryption. And there's this whole social interaction piece around it. Um, I looked at, I saw Mike's Wi-Fi Pineapple, and uh, I made my own smaller version, better looking one. Uh, <laughs> that's fire. <laughs> Wi-Fi cactus. Better functioning, works better, looks better. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So yeah, this is a. So this is a, this one is all uh, Feather, ESP Feather, um, uh, ESP eighty two sixty six, Feather by Adafruit. So, um, in a, in a, in a three D case, three uh, D printed case, it's kind of hard to see. But yeah, nice. I mean, you know. Um, well, and going back to something that you had said a second right. ago that you started with Aircrack, their Crack Suite and Airmon. That yeah. was was something that I was early on with as well. Um, because I was like, well, we have TCP dump, then then we use must use arrow dump. That's how you dump wireless packets. Like that's that's what I thought, and it turns out that tool was built for a very specific purpose of cracking right. things. So and it, and it was it was the the act of actually getting involved and trying to do something, build a project, and try to collect that data, and finding out that it had failed, that led to you know the iterations and iterations so the first step is definitely like go start collecting go start doing this on your own run kismet run wiggle phone and figure out what's around you yeah so dns princess pointed out the uh war collar by oh is that war collar or yeah that- war collar the the ssid tracker yeah um i can't which find is a it. really cool tool right um, I can't find it now, but I built one that's that because it's it's opaque, right? I built one that has a see-through uh, screen on it, so that you can actually see what you're looking at. 
Um, but I can't find it right now. But it's a oh, basic idea. Bummer. So, so right, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I mean, there, there's a lot of different. And then you know, um, Raspberry Pis are now powerful enough to actually run Kismet because Kismet on the ra Raspberry Pi yeah. wasn't a pleasant experience for a long time. <laughs> as yeah. much as I love it, you know, as much as I love uh, Dragon and Kismet, running that thing on RPi three, for example, or zero, that was just that was just yeah, painful. So um, you know, we had. Can I we interject have, something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, recently with an RPi four with four gigs, I ran that for eleven days. Got about we got about sixty thousand devices. Yeah. So now it's actually with some of the recent memory optimizations he's made with Kismet, it is working well. But you're right. In the past, it was like something you run for a couple hours, and yeah, if you kept... run it in a big city, it would it would explode in like seventeen minutes. Yeah. But because uh, it would have too many devices, but now it's actually it's actually okay. Yeah, the, the uh, iterations. The uh, um, the uh, USB I got upgraded 3.0 helps a lot with the power management, mm -hmm. from my experience at least. Because some of the like well, lead alpha cards, they are they are power hungry cards. So you know, can confirm, right? If you if you wanted to run them on of a Raspberry Pi 3, I mean, you know, the USB port usually just craps out because it sucks so much power out of it, and then you know you have five minutes of capture, and then janky packets at most so you know <laughs> um yeah that's something that as you get more advanced in this and you start adding more antennas you start learning about is the power draw of the hardware that you're using um and, and understanding and, what right. that is is very important yeah and everybody you know i you know i get it often ask a lot of questions like well i have an r part three that i'm not using i'm going to throw four alpha cards on it and throw it in my backpack and i'm sitting there like good luck getting that up and running and I hope you have a nice ventilated bag because that thing gets hot, you know. Oh, yeah. um, so, you know, it, 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 it's one of those things that, you know, trial and error you learn. And I think that's why I ended up in, in building things like this is that, you know, if I just want to capture SSIDs, I don't need a full setup. I don't need a laptop and a card. I just need, you know, ESP. And the, and the good thing about, you know, 2.4 is like, if it has a 5 gigahertz, I have never seen this yet. Uh, I might be wrong, but I've never seen a 5 gig AP that doesn't have a 2.4 component. Pretty much. The only time yeah, I've seen them is in carrier it. class and internet yeah, ISP yeah, yeah. level stuff. Right. But not, but, not on, but not on a, on, 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 on a mass scale in, 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 a, in a residential settings. Yeah, for sure. Because, yeah, well, there's another factor to that too, though. Is when you're scanning on 2.4 gigahertz, a lot of the stuff that's on that LAN, whatever it is, is still, even if it's a, say it's a printer that you have wired in, if you've got a laptop that's talking to that printer over Wi-Fi, that printer is still going to show up on Wi-Fi, even on 2.4 gigahertz, even right. though it's wired in because right. it's talking to a laptop that's on 2.4 gigahertz. Right. So you still get a lot of stuff on 2.4 gigahertz, even though that stuff may be on 5 gigahertz or it's wired in. On the Ethernet, you still see it over. You still see packets of that over the, over the 2.4 gigahertz. A lot of printers have a lot of, a lot of printers have like they have like a default AP, web enabled AP on them to, for configuration. Yeah, and there's so. a Wi-Fi Direct, and there's other right. stuff that's there too. Yeah. So, you know, um, but yeah, I mean that's the one thing, right? Uh, I think in the chat too, SDRs get really hot. Yeah, like if you have one of those new Alec aluminum. Um, dongles, that shit gets hot. So heat is always going to be an issue uh, when you start doing stuff like this, right? The art pie gets hot, your adapters get hot, the alpha cards get hot. That's why, you know, some of the rigs that I've shown on Instagram, I run them naked because it's just better heat management for me that way, right? So Do you run naked? Well, I don't, but <laughs> if I if I were if I were I would at least wear a mask these days. So well, that's that's smart because <laughs> I'm responsible like that, right? So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So we, we had a quick question right. on um, it's, there's a good chill tool to check power, and yeah. I've got this. There's a USB tool. Actually, two seconds. It's uh, the USB tool. You can just plug stuff into it, right. and it will show you the power that it's drawing. From USB, I use. Uh, it's really cool. 
Yeah, a quick a quick way to do it is uh, I use PowerTop, which is top on Linux, but for power. So yeah, the problem with that is that's usually is just the reported yeah, yeah. Uh, current. You won't necessarily get the entire draw. I've found it's different, but this uh, physically allows you to plug the dongle in and then put it on the other end. And so I can see this also supports USB three um, and uh, USB C as well. So this this guy's pretty pretty nice. Yeah, it's, yeah, I got I got a couple of those too. Um, but, can confirm. So I mean, you know, there's a lot of little tuning that you have to do when you start doing word driving, right? And um, I think when we when we talk about word driving, we always you know. Somebody will come up with this massive antenna, or like a Yagi like this. It's like uh -huh, I can here we go. I can find an AP from five miles away, right? So Jim sent like, me a picture where he was up on top of a mountain. What were you, twelve miles out? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he literally sent me this picture, but him on a mountain. Yeah. Right. So oh, that's actually a thing. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, what I was going to say is depends on what you're trying to do, right? If you're trying to find data, then a stronger antenna might be better. But if you're accurately trying to map it, a strong antenna is actually detrimental because you'll catch so much things and your GPS will be off, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize if you use a Yagi or a parabolic or panel antennas, you're picking up stuff from a block or two away a half mile away, a quarter mile, and it's mapping it to your location, which is bad. And that's not, that's not helpful. Bad for wiggle. That's bad for yeah, wiggle. Yeah, for wiggle. For actually right. mapping the stuff and doing the war driving, that's kind of a bad thing. So if you had like, you know, five Yagi antennas spread across, you know, capturing everything, war driving, yes, you'll capture a lot of things, but it'll be kind of shitty data, right? It wouldn't be beneficial to anybody. Yep. So bigger is not necessarily better, right? Um, right? There are cases where I actually had to cut the uh, the uh, uh, PCB antenna on an ESP8266 just to make it detect that they wanted to find a rogue AP or D author, right? Okay. So um, that they wanted to be on top of it to detect it. So um, you know, I, I I had to really like downgrade the the, the reception of, of the antenna so that when you stood next to it, it will detect it. But if you were two feet away, it wouldn't. So you know, going back again, what is it that they're trying to do, right? Um, but uh, in general, so somebody wants to go wiggle or somebody wants to go war driving, right? Uh, I think we covered a lot. Phone is probably the easiest way to do it, um, but. Um, what if you wanted to do a little bit more? What would be you, your go-to setups? It depends on what that more is. Are we talking right. like red team more? Are we talking right. like more discovery and war driving more? How about war driving more? Yeah, war driving. For, for war driving more, um, I would say grab a laptop and a wireless card and slam that wireless card in the laptop and you've just upgraded your capture ability a lot and you've got more processing what operating power. System? What's that? Are we going Kali <laughs> or are we going Pentu? Uh, <laughs> or Pentu, Parrot, yes. of course. Parrot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've been running Pentu a lot. I've also run a lot of Debian Ubuntu-based stuff as well. Um, Kali is also an option. Uh, I like Pentu. Uh, friend Zero runs it. Uh, he maintains it, so shout out to them. Uh, set up with all the tools that you need to do wireless stuff out of the gate. So right. um, the only problem is it's run in Gen 2. So. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 if, you, and if you decide to run Ubuntu 2004, um, you've got certain MediaTek cards that are already in kernel drivers, so those are going to work. Right. Um, and that works out of the gate with Kismet and things like right. that. Uh, no problem. So oh, yeah. I, do one more, I mean, you don't. And one thing that a lot of people misunderstand is that you don't need a wife, uh, a Wi-Fi uh, card that has monitor mode for war driving. Yeah, for right, to get right? started. No, right. not at all. No, not to get started. No. So a lot of people are like, "Well, I, I want to get this card, but I can't get it." It's like, look, I mean, like, I have boxes full of like 
domestic stuff. And sometimes um, I like to pick some of my domestic cards because they tend to be more tuned to the to the domestic stuff that they use. So I've had cases where like a uh, alpha wouldn't pick it up, but a buffalo will pick it up. I don't know, weird thing, right? Just because buffalo is more prevalent here in my neighborhood, right? So. That's interesting. I wonder if that has to do with um, some of the channel lockout too, like yeah, you said, so. um, if they end up on channel 13 and stuff right. over there, because that's right. legal in Japan, right? Channel right, right. 13. Yeah. It's also, I think, a little bit of the channel management that happens, I think. Yeah. Um, so, so that comes down to knowing your hardware and knowing your software and making right. sure configure properly. Right. Um, so uh, we had a request from the yeah. chat about Kim talking about your car setup. Right. So for those who don't know, Kim has a war driving car. No, no, I have a war driving thing that I put in cars. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me see if I can share my screen real quick. Um, sure. Give me a sec. Um, I have some pictures. So I went on, I had to go for work to Missouri lately. And uh, where for work? work no i had i had a class i had to do in missouri it was jefferson city nobody chooses to go to jefferson city but <laughs> no no disrespect to jefferson actually i enjoyed barry goes i'm I sorry <laughs> i honestly didn't want to fly that's really what it comes down to so um let me pull up so what i set up is uh i have some antennas let me see if i can share my screen here can i share screen should be. you should be able to let me just share my my real screen. So, can you guys see this? Yep, yep. it's good. Okay, so I, I got a couple of antennas. These are Mag Mount dual band five and two point four gigahertz antennas. I got them from a company called Lcom. It's l hyphen com dot com. They're about seventy bucks a piece. They have uh, reverse polarity SMA adapters. This is my my rental car, but I blocked out the. Uh, the nice thing is I had this South Carolina plate so I could drive like an asshole all the time because I'm not <laughs> from South Carolina. So, and, uh, and so, um, okay, I did run my Hack RF with the uh, Porta Pack. Can you see that? Hmm. So there I was doing TPMS uh, reads. Oh, sorry, that's totally different. Um, <laughs> and uh, I have a mount, and I, I just have a laptop that I run Kismet on, and this is running to a – an alpha, it's an AWS 036 ACM. It's a MediaTek 7612 chipset. Hey, that and laptop looks familiar. And that's hooked up to the back screen. And I was listening to Gary Clark Jr. that day. Um, <laughs> that's cool. And then I have I have four phones set up. So um, I have the, the Hack RF running. I have the, the laptop on a mount. Um, and then here I was listening to a uh, Wait, that's surfers. not pen too. <laughs> no, this is definitely Ubuntu. <laughs> I, I I actually like my time, so I use Ubuntu twenty oh four. Right. Um, <laughs> one okay. Side note: Ubuntu twenty oh four. Anything that has, I think it's kernel. Mike, help me here. Is it beyond four dot twenty? Yes. Or support for the media. No, three twenty nine. Whatever. Anyway, so this is like kernel five point four, and so it works with the MediaTek chipsets, and I run. Uh, uh, Kismet on that, and I run usually three or four phones, um, so that's the deal. Um, I also use these uh, Alpha panel antennas, and I go up on the hill. This is in Utah, where I go up on the hill and I scan people. Um, that's something else. And I use this antenna. This is my light hacking, my hiking rig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just take my antenna up there. I do some uh, scanning from the hill. Yeah, but anyway. Um, Let's go here. Stop yeah, injecting there. that image, God dang it. <laughs> it's, it's just in my pictures. Sorry. But these, I have little mounts. They're made by a company called Skosh. They're like those little magnet mounts um, and uh, just hooked up into the, uh, in the car. Yeah. And yeah, I got, I got a couple hundred thousand access points and devices logged across country. It was pretty fun, actually. Right. But, uh, so, like, but I it's said, actually very simple. There's only there's just some phones and one one wireless card on a laptop in Kismet. That's it. There's nothing crazy going on there. Yeah, and you, Mike, you have the pineapple and the Kraken, but you don't war drive with those, right? There's almost stationary recon, right? 
Uh, not necessarily. The Kraken, I've taken more driving a number of okay. times. Right. So um, I had to get, I don't have it up here with me, but um, I had to get a 400 watt uh, in-car um, inverter. So I have batteries. I can run it for three hours on batteries. But obviously, if you're in a car, why not just use an inverter and, and continue to run your in run your device off the car, right? So I've got a 400 watt um, power conversion kit that I'm able to hook directly to the car battery. And then from there, um, able to run the Kraken. The problem with the Kraken though, is it's a little bit bigger than the front seat <laughs> and it's a uh, 23 inch monitor. So when you pull up to someone at a stoplight, <laughs> they look over and give you the weirdest looks. Yeah, good thing you're not brown. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just like, it's cool, I'm with the FBI. Yeah. Uh, my name's Russ. I'm with the FBI. That's 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 uh that's impersonating. That's that's a felony. That's a he's felony. not a fed anymore. No, no, <laughs> it's not a you, felony. You, you saying your FBI is actually a felony for impersonating a federal agent? I guess. I'm not the FBI. I yeah, I'm not the FBI. That was um, a joke. Yeah. Super joking. Love you, Russ. So, um, but yeah, I mean, um, I think so. There was a question about channel stats um yeah literally it's one six and eleven that i've seen here at least in tokyo because that's a yeah, 2.4 gigahertz yeah on 2.4 gigahertz is one six and eleven i haven't looked in too much into the 5g's yet but um, um hey if somebody gets a hold of me i can pull i have literally every csv i've uploaded to wiggle for the last four years mm -hmm. um i could pipe those into into pandas um uh, in python and i can tell you what the most common it would be for 2.4 like you said 1 6 and 11 would be tops and then probably you know channel 40 whatever 136 for five gigahertz whatever i don't know but we'll see yeah um i could do it if you want just let me know All right so um the other well we're starting to get questions so that's a good thing i guess oh uh, what is what is the part number of those magmont antennas um yeah follow uh Kim on, on Twitter. Um, yeah, if you DM me on Twitter, I'm rject on Twitter. I can send you exactly which part mount they are. Um, what I did talk to my wife into, well, we have a full glass top on the car, and so I can't put them on the top. So I actually talked her into letting me get some real NMO mounts right. permanently mounted with an Intel Nook in the trunk. And so that's what I'm going to soon. But those mag mounts I use for, like, my rental cars and things, uh, they work yeah. really well. So, so yeah, I just, just let me know yeah. on Arject on Twitter. Ar Arts wise, Arject. I just got um. So there's a great talk on the Wireless Village YouTube uh, about GPS positioning, and I just mm -hmm. got the GM3 uh, USB dongle that was mentioned. The GNSS one that covers like all the satellites. That thing locks fast. <laughs> like you run. What's the model of that? Uh, GM3. Uh, okay. It's a GNS uh, GNSS satellite dongle. Um, oh, you know, you, you, okay. you bring up uh, you bring up um, GPS uh, GD and uh, run uh, CGPS on it. It captures like 22 satellites instantly. Nice, like boom everywhere. Because I have one of those um, GlassNOS G GSP ones. I have the GPS one, and I have a pseudo mix one that covers GPS, uh, GlassNOS, and um, QZSS, the Japanese standard. And it's okay, but this GM3 is is like I just I just fired it up. Like I literally got it last night. I came here this morning. I plugged it in, and I was just like, whoa. <laughs> um, so I think I think if you're gonna do war driving with GPS, that is, the, I mean, they're not cheap. They're like sixty bucks. But no, that would be good. Yeah, the do, one I'm using right now is just one of those U Block Sevens. It's a yeah, USB yeah, yeah. one, and it works okay. But yeah. it's. When you get in cities, it's not super awesome. Right, right. Um, out in the sticks, it's fine. But right. uh, yeah. No, and this I, is the, really this is the one that I'm using. This is the BU3535. Yeah, yeah I, got, I got one of those too. Oh, uh, yeah. Everybody, four. every seventh grader has one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's only a, I've only had a few problems with it. And um, it's, it's weird. The date and time gets really. Yeah. Weird when you're having problems but that's the kind of that's the kind of accuracy right that that you want right so i, I mean especially when you're trying to map points right um you you want it and you know like i said i mean i have two next i mean you i know you guys like samsung i'm not a big samsung fan so i got five x's they're yeah. like you know i don't actually use samsung's 
fifty bucks. Oh, I use geez. a couple of Pixel threes and a Pixel right. one and Nexus six P. I'm all um, Samsung in. Yeah. S sevens. Right. I have S fives and S sevens because they play Pokemon Go. The S sevens play Pokemon Go really good. <laughs> Gotcha. So, the dual purpose phones. Right, right. You got to go with what you know. Uh, we had a quick question. Is uh, separate, deep, separate GPS device mandatory? Not really. I mean, you can, I mean, I have, uh, so on the Android, uh, let's see if I have this on here. Android, no. No. No, what I'm saying is there's an app. Uh, I thought I had it on this one. Oh, yeah. There is a... Yeah, okay. So there is an app called Share GPS. Hold on, let me just focus. Yep. In. That's very, yeah, it's called Share GPS. That works pretty well. And uh, this works pretty good. So it uses your, you can use your phone as your, uh, as your GPS receiver. Um, and you can USB tether this to Raspberry Pi, laptop, whatever. Um, and it will, it will share the GPS data. So sometimes, you know, phone is, phone is actually easier. And then uh, two, you could set up a fixed installation. So for example, when I've like been at a hotel and had the crack in yeah. at a hotel or a laptop at a hotel and I know the location, there's a command line uh, flag in Wiggle where you can set it up as a station. So it'll automatically add that GPS data for that location. Yep. So um, then it's like you're a station mode. So it's that a, is it's the example. same for Kismet. Kismet has a flag that you can use um, to, to for uh, station uh, data so uh, in the in the config file um so yeah yeah there's also a an app on android called fake gps location and that'll let you set a location and so like sometimes i go in a building and i lose my gps but i want to keep it so i set it to that location and that'll set it as well so that's another option if you want right and then a third option which i highly don't recommend is, which is illegal <laughs> be just what? GPS to where you want it with your SDR. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you, I wrong. mean, only for testing and educational purposes in an uh, in a Faraday case. In a Faraday case, you're right. You're right. Right. Absolutely. That's always scares me when they're like on on DefCon stage. It's like, yes, I'm going to show you how to fake the GPS here. I'm like, yeah, let's not transmit. You know. <laughs> but um. I think I think that covers the things that we wanted to cover, right? So let's start it with a, something easy. Um, Mike, your audio is a bit low, I guess. Um, and um, you know, just 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 have fun. I mean, I, I think it's a great hobby. It's a great way to get out. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's and I would say I would recommend just grab an Android phone if you got one. Uh, start using Wiggle. Uh, that works really well. And then go from there. And did you want to, Kentar, are you going to mention the discords? Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to just big ups to uh, wiggle.net for always supporting us, you know, uh, putting up with our shit. Cause I was like, I was like down, I was uploading like four times the same file. Cause I was testing some of the stuff I was working on. It's just like, <laughs> so it's zero. Yeah, I know there's nothing there, but uh, th thanks for putting up with me on that one. Um, Kismet. Always, um, always the best tool out there. Um, so check, go check it out on on uh, what's the actual domain actually? No, Kismetwireless.net. Kismet dot net. net. Yeah. Um, they have right. a, the, if you have any issue with it, just come on the Discord. Um, you know, me, Mike, or, uh, Kim, and a whole bunch of other people are usually on it. Um, it's a very supportive community. Uh, the Wireless Village always brings up fun. So. Um, it's a wireless ninja. Uh, why, or is it a wireless dot ninja? I never get that right. Uh, and they've got a new YouTube channel. Yeah, they got um, a new. They got a new YouTube channel. Um, and they also have a Discord, uh, vibrant community out there. Um, so um, those are the plugs I wanted to make. Uh, one thing that I didn't put in the notes that I would do want: do not get a card that has eighty-eight twelve AU on it. I don't... <laughs> Unless you're me. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> and you hate yourself, yeah. and you and you want to suffer. So um... this is this is a whole slew of them that don't work. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's just. There is. I mean, 
the amount of um, questions we get is just, it's not worth it. Um, I, th I will say a friend of mine who shall name, who shall not be named said, if they have an 8812, then they deserve the suffering. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that, and ultimately, I mean, that's a that's a that's a good word of warning. Is um, if you're running into problems, there's yeah. odds are other people have ran into those problems too, right. and there's probably a better way. Yeah. Um, there's device drivers now that have matured and are built into the Linux kernel, uh, and so it's just better devices. Um, I mean, if if you're if you're a hardware person and know how to write kernels and driver stuff, kernel drivers, then by all means, get after it. And, and please, please donate back to the community and, and maintain it. Um, but uh, I'm not. And so I have to, I, I'm at the mercy of, of other people. And so when I see something good, I, I love to point it out and give them mad respect like, I mean, for it. I think if you just want a war drive, they're fine. But if you're going to spend money on a card, just get something that doesn't have it on it is one for so. Yeah, the, the issue with that one, the 8812 does not have in-kernel drivers. So right. Aircrack has some drivers that work, and I've gotten them to work, but they have broken packets. They have issues. Yeah. So if I just want to look and see what devices are present, it's great. But otherwise, I go with the MediaTek yeah. 7612 or 7610 chipsets. And, and they have in-kernel drivers ever since, like, kernel whatever. 329. Or, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, so if you have kernel 5 yeah. or greater, you're, you're fine. Yeah. Um, and it's MediaTek 76XX, 7612, 7610s. They work great. Um, do, do we want to do a couple of questions? Yeah, yeah, we'll do a couple of questions. I don't, I don't want to grab all four Max when you're war driving. Like, oh, Mac. yeah, uh, all four Max in the hand, in the, oh, in the, uh, packet, oh, in the like the TX, T, oh, uh, right, T A S A D A R A. Um, yeah, I definitely grab. Uh, all of those. I'm very interested in seeing all of that, especially because when people are running like uh, bridge networks and stuff, you find different addresses for DA and TA. Um, you'll find different nuances there and you can find out more about architecture and what's set up. So it's a really good way to like map someone's infrastructure by being able to look at all of those. So that's been some really interesting analysis is what is happening between those different MAC addresses. And Kim, I think you are especially fond of MAC addresses. Oh, I love them. I memorize them. I love, I, yeah, they're my, they're my yeah, there's a point where I just get a, when you find a weird MAC address, I just text Kim. It's like, hey, Kim, what's this? And he goes, oh, that's a car. It's a, tire it's a body camera. It's a body camera. And like, okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a weird OUI, tweet at uh, Kim and RJ. Yeah, and I'll laugh and say, <laughs> and who are you? Uh, and in fact, on the Kismet Wireless Discord, there's a channel called hash, uh, Pound Mac that uh, is about the more Mac OUI. Oh, is it, yeah. oh, it's more OUI. It's called more right. OUI, yeah. More OUI, that's right. Yeah. More M-O-A-R, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah M-O-A-R, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, right. Because there are, I mean, there are so many OUIs that come out Daily, almost. It's just almost ridiculous. Oh yeah, so. it's true. It's true. Uh, the kids uh, make other questions. Right? Is um, you can get it from uh, you can get to it from kismedwireless.net. I'm sure. Yeah. I, do, I think we could probably post an invite in yeah, in our on. chat tonight, don't you think? Uh, I think I can, but hold on. Hold on. There you go. Yeah. There we go. Somebody posted a Grimace. invite. There you go. Hey, Grimace, do me a favor. And I want, to, uh, can you do at least a write up on, on, on your war driving this year? Um, you might not want to come on here and talk to us about it, but I want to. Oh, yeah, they I wanna, do. I'll... They do. No, no, no. Grimace. <laughs> No, I know. That's what I'm talking about. They want to get on here. Oh, okay. Well, then next time, next time we'll do. Uh, next time, hey Grimace, if you're okay with, uh, uh, you know, coming on, uh, let's talk, right? So, only uh, up to you, though. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. No, yeah, you don't have to. I just, I'm just really curious how you. How oh you no, they better. they have to. <laughs> no. <laughs> Shut up, Damn, you're Shut so up <laughs> Just kidding. Jeez. Yeah, Net Tumblr days are great, but um, 
right? Um, but I think, I think, like I said, um, you know, the tools now have matured way more um, uh, to be able to see a lot more things. So, yeah, it's definitely a golden age of capturing the wireless at this point. Yeah. Oh yeah, whether it's whether it's uh, SDR, whether it's Wi-Fi, whether it's just anything. Yeah. Like we have so many tools, so many cool projects and so many people passionate about it. So, yeah. Um, also for, for Mac users, I know there's not much tools out there. Uh, you might think, but I've been using Wi-Fi Explorer a lot by, uh, um, uh, in, in tweet to beat. I never can pronounce their number. Um, <laughs> on, on Mac. Yeah. Is that Adrian Granados? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it's actually a, a good tool. It is a, it is a very nice Adrian tool. Adrian Granados. It's yeah. a good tool and it's free. Yeah. And they have a paid version. But, they have uh, paid. I have yeah. a paid version, but it's. I mean, it, it's 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 actually one of the better tools when it comes on a Mac platform. If you don't want to, you know, um, if you don't want to uh, 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 carry another specific laptop for. Um, or you don't want to look like a nerd with your Linux, hack all the things. Yeah, you can just go into the Starbucks with your right. MacBook Air, and you're good. I don't know. I haven't used Kismet in a long time. Good point, Barry. I doubt it, but... What is Kismet? Well, I mean, you can run Kismet on your on your Mac, so... Right, you yeah. can. But the, what I'm saying is that the hurdle is a little bit higher compared to Wi-Fi Explorer. Yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah, but there are build instructions on kismetwireless.net for the Mac. Yeah. You can install it. Um, you're going to need homebrew or Mac ports mm -hmm. um, to do it. But, yeah, I, I do it on my MacBook Air, so it, it works. Yeah, Kismet latest update was uh, February 7th, 2011. So that's a, that's a bit out there. You know? <laughs> Pocket PC phone, yeah. I think I think if I think the coolest thing to do is to run Kismet on your NetHunter phone, right now. That is like lead. <laughs> um, uh, step one: throw the Mac out of the window. Yeah, Russ, you're just a hater, man. You're just a hater. Uh, I got a question. Um, when I'm capturing all the packets, what are some of the first things I look for? Yeah. Um, probably the very first thing I go after is SSIDs and then uh, commonalities between MAC addresses and try to see if there's any correlations there, like how many people are connected to a certain um, access point. Another low-hanging fruit is the type of encryption that people are using. Um, that's always interesting. Um, and then, like, if I was able to capture the full handshake, um, that's another thing that's interesting because... Uh, for WPA2 and 1, it's just a matter of time at that point, whether and if, you know, depending on the complexity of the password, it could be feasibly cracked. That stuff's just all really interesting to me uh, because it's, just, it's, it's there and it's in the wireless and it's fun to grab that type of information. So, um, yeah, those are, the, those are some of the first things that I go after. And then from there, I look at, like, what stuff is there that I shouldn't see? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like what's not encrypted, what VPNs are leaking, what type of stuff like that, what people are doing stuff over the wireless. Um, yeah. So uh, one thing uh, that I that I forgot to mention, I um, besides Kismet, um, the other tool that I really like, and I used to run it on my pocket chip, the the uh, uh, the the um, Linux gaming device that came out with the keyboard, is Horst. Um, Horse is a terminal-based um, uh, radio scanning tool, and uh, it hasn't been maintained for the last couple of years, I would say, I guess. But it, it's super lightweight. It works well. You don't have to have anything fancy on it. Uh, it runs off a terminal. So, yeah, Horse is kind of cool. I just want to – I shared it in the chat. But, um for if if you want to feel that old hackery, old kismet kind of thing, I mean somebody could write an incursus version for that, but I guess. But uh, currently, definitely kismet is 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 the gold standard. Um, 
Anything else you guys want to do? Share? No? Good? We good? I think we are up on the hour, so. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Not it. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys had uh, people in the chat. hope you had fun. Uh, I had fun always. I had fun. Talking to you guys. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, keep tweeting at uh, Mike Dark Matter. Um, if you if you want us to continue this series, we might do a, I don't know, nerdy driver talk and we'll get zero on <laughs> and uh, he will he will school us on on Wi-Fi card drivers and, and the various issues and why Pentu is a more superior platform than anything, <laughs> anything out there. So, wow. And, and also we have some other thoughts in the works, too, of uh, maybe taking you guys on a, a war driving trip with us, perhaps, uh, see if we can live stream awesome. some things like that together and kind of let you see it yeah. in action. Right. I mean, we would love to show you how what we can pick up right now. The problem is we're all at home right now. and <laughs> lot, I mean, I'm safe, but There's a I'm pandemic. Sure. Anyway, I'm Maybe you've safe. heard about it. So. <laughs> well, uh, we'll try to do this again. So, all right. Thank yeah. you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We love you guys. Aren't you? Art, Art, how do you do that? Anyway. <laughs> it's magic. All right. Yeah. See you guys later. And we're away. Hold on.